Some 80 odd miles off the Mablethorpe coast stands the four hunks of steel known as Viking Bravo. As we fly in our chopper over the North Sea, we spot it down below and decide to drop in for a 24 hour visit. Touchdown. Have we made the right decision in coming here? Well, soon we shall find out. We make our way down to Heliadmin to check in for our short stay. First of all, our details, height, weight and inside leg measurements are recorded for further use. Next, after getting lost in the corridors, we find our way to our apartment to have a look around. An ample sized accommodation with all the requirements for a comfortable stay. Short people on the bottom bunk, tall ones on the top. For anyone wishing to hide, there are four full length wardrobes. A handy bag is provided to carry all your small loose change for such things as name cards or bingo. Personal hygiene is very important, for otherwise with no windows to open you would soon make a name for yourself. Each room is thoroughly cleaned each day by our efficient room service. Yeah! <laughs> our next job is to be shown to our lifeboat station, which is lovingly referred to as the Alton Towers Ride by our eager coxswain. Once down inside the boat, we strap in while Cox describes what the controls are and how well he knows them. Oh no, don't touch that, Eddie. After the boat is recovered, it's time for morning tea break, as we join this offshore crew with their delicate and restrained eating habits. After tea, we head down to the control room, for we must check in before we can go anywhere on the platform. Until tea break finishes, the control room remains fairly quiet, so a three-channel TV system is provided for entertainment. Here we meet the control room operator, 
whose sanity is under challenge. A large panel of pretty lights monitors all the platform for fire or gas release and this is kept under the watchful eye of our highly motivated production staff. Some men have been known to pass away while waiting for permits. Ever alert, the production boys are always ready. While the production supervisor prefers to keep behind his screen so he can't see what is going on. I've got some joining instructions. Next, we head down to the far end of the platform for a boat is due to be worked by the crane. We arrive at BD Top Deck just in time to see the boat's arrival. All but the smallest of parcels arrive or are dispatched by sea. The first load is delicately swung out ready. The deck crew, with Velcro-covered shoe soles, wait patiently on the deck. The skipper appears to have had one too many from the bond locker, as he eases his ship closer to the platform. The object of the game is to drop the box on the yellow spot. If the crane driver gets it right, it's Mars bars all round. Already the platform crew are running a book at 10 to 1 odds against a win as the ship's gladiator defenders push the load to one side. Tony, grim-faced, decides to have another try. Whoops, missed again. No Mars bars this time. Enough sport for one day as our contestant takes a curtain call.
This is where we stack all our boxes, on the top deck. Now let's go down below to have a look around. Well, perhaps not quite that low, for the water looks quite cold today. BD cellar deck is where the construction lads make and store things, the offshore equivalent of the garden shed. Most of the gas we handle comes from our lonely little satellites, where some of the lads go for a quiet day away from the main platform. Yes, our crew can recognise a wellhead, but only just. For it is lovingly called a Christmas tree, even though we don't decorate it. Next, we'll have a look at the production platform. From the lowest deck level, the sea can be seen moving in lumps towards us. The gas now travels through these salt and pepper pots to knock the liquid out of it. Our highly trained staff know exactly which valves to operate. Gas rate is adjusted by these big taps, or valves to the technically minded. Here we demonstrate our human portable gas detector. Here we have an operator whose wife has just rung up to say her oven isn't hot enough. So we duly turn the rate up a bit. On the main deck stands our vent stack, which the helicopters use to find us in low fog banks. At weekends it's used for bungee jumping. Platform terrorists go around making holes in everything. No, these aren't gasometers, just our fuel and chemical storage. In the production control room, the mass of instruments is monitored carefully by our highly skilled staff. Next to the control room is a workshop where some of the crew are taking an OU course in washing machine repairs.
Here we make our own electricity with these machines, which are similar to a big bicycle dynamo. The clocks which go with it show the times of all the countries in the world. It's nearly time for dinner, so we'll head on back to the accommodation and take a look at the mess room. The secret ingredients are just being mixed. They're that secret that even the chef doesn't know what they are. The menu looks good. It tastes even better if you mix it all together on one plate. Our attendant galley staff are most courteous and even more so if you ask for that extra bit of service. Environmentally, environmentally friendly this food, Mark. It's all recycled. Spot the tuna. As part of the healthy eating campaign, the sweet counter is always well stocked. One joint or two is the normal question asked. Before long, the troops arrive and begin to demolish everything in sight. After lunch, we pop up to the offices, and here we find the boss, quietly working away. We're never sure whether he's filling in the pools or just applying for another job. Next door is his right-hand man, sorry, woman. She's busy rehashing the OIM's CV. Surely you can't type with nails like that. If you're lonely and bored with no one to talk to, then why not hold a meeting? It's a good excuse to get your hands on a tin of biscuits. And if you do disagree, we have the perfect way to settle the matter. Up top of the accommodation is our resident weather forecaster. This is the modern equivalent to a bit of wet seaweed. The helideck crew are a breed apart. Apart from us, at least, thank goodness. Hi, 
They're never sure where the next chopper is coming from. Here, the lads are just getting a chopper ready to leave. Here we see the helideck crew checking for stowaways before the chopper leaves, for some of the crew have run out of loo days. Down on the lower level, the bagwash swings into action. We are always prepared for dire emergencies. Even the cleanest sheets can be altered by addition of a few sets of overalls. Let's go and take a look at the compression platform. The cellar deck is a great mass of confusing pipework and vessels. You can easily get lost. If you look carefully, you can just see one of our operators who is lost. On the main deck, we house our three compressors. The Viking ones look like this. They're a bit like super fast windmills to push the gas to shore. Just down the main deck, a pace or two, is the Victor compressor. It's just the same as the other two, but different. There is a dedicated control room just to look after the compressors.
and you can always find some readings to do when it's bad weather outside. Our operators are fully confident in their control operations. The modern technology causes us no problems at all to learn. And our crew respond positively to every alarm. This is our resident equivalent to a gas meter reader on shore. As you can see, not too many people want to use the engineering workshop. We also have a group of Meccano builders on board, but what they're building and why, we're never quite sure. Following the yellow brick road back to BA always takes us along this 75 yards long bridge. And what's more, it's just as long on the lower level. But at least here you can see the sea beneath you. And just in case you fall through, there's always a boat close by. Beneath the accommodation is a large spare area. We think we might use it for five-a-side football or even a golf driving range. The office area next to the control room is where the maintenance section decide which bit of the platform they're going to sabotage next. They call it repairs. Here we see our resident TV repairman. He's always more than willing to swing into action armed with his trusty soldering iron. <laughs> this key user is but a plumber. Here we see this week's bingo numbers being checked. This one man is our own personal superstore. Back on the main deck, we take a quick look at our holiday caravan site. All fully equipped with all mod cons, we have great difficulty in keeping the squatters out. Our sick bay is fully prepared for all emergencies. Let's go inside and take a look. It's soon time to eat again. 
and it's at least seven hours since our last three-course meal and only another two hours before it's time for evening snacks. The food must be all right because everybody seems to come back again the next day. After dinner, you may want a bar of chocolate from the shop, if you can catch it open. <laughs> In the evening, the living room, or rec room as it's called, gets quite full. Taking coffee. Usually unknown. Yeah, first time I made coffee in a... The sea doesn't affect us, but some of the pool shots make us sick. We have a sunbed on board, so you can top up your tan. Ah, here we have someone about to go in and give it a try. We have all been warned about the danger of overexposure to this facility. For if the clock sticks and you spend too long on it, unusual effects may occur. <sighs> Out in the caravan site is our built-in torture chamber. And like most of us out here, this man seems to be getting nowhere fast. Out on the platform, it is now dark, but the night shift continue in their duties. There is always plenty of paperwork to sort out. And of course the supervisor's drawers must be checked, just in case of anything unusual. During the night all is quiet, except for the return of the laundry. That is, until the magic hour of 6am. Let us now join the knock-up and venture into the lair of this strange animal, the offshore worker. Morning, Paul. Rise and shine. Hello, lads. Is there anybody there? There was. Oh, no. Oh. What time it is? Is Paul awake? There he is, handsome look. Morning, Paul. Good morning. <laughs> Sorry. And now it's time for a spot of breakfast before our return flight is due.
A silence hangs over the breakfast tables. They must be sorry to see us leaving. We just have time to struggle into our SAS suits and don life jackets for the Mr Blobby Lookalike competition. Our red taxi awaits us on the helideck. And the boat wallows closer to say goodbye. So it's farewell to the Viking Bravo, unless we come back again sometime. <laughs>